Okay, th th thank you very much for uh, this kind introduction. So, as uh, Martina said, uh, I was a professor of physics. I was in solid state physics at Ecole Polytechnique, which is a well-known French engineering school. I was one of the founder, and I'm now the president of honor of the French association Femme et Science, Women and Science. And uh, currently, I'm the president of the European platform of women scientists, which gathers uh, uh, different uh, women scientist associations all over Europe. So I will be very short on my long personal experience. When I go to classes, I show a diagram like that, which is uh, my CV in some way. Uh, you can imagine my age. I was educated in girls only schools because at that time it was like that. It was a long time ago. I did a PhD, I went on sabbatical in the United States, and it happened that I was doing my research at Ecole Polytechnique, where I became assistant professor in 80. I was the first woman assistant professor in the physics department at Ecole Polytechnique, and when I applied in the 92 for a professor position, I did not know that there had never been any woman professor before that, since the foundation of the school and all disciplines since the French Revolution. So it occurred to me, and that from that time, I was an advocate of the women and science issue. I retired in 2005, but uh, since that, I've been busy uh, with this topic. And when I go to classes, I also show that, because if I am the grandmother of the topic women and science in France, I'm also a grandmother, and it is uh, an important part of my life. So uh, you should have an, another life than science also. Eh? So um, Martin gave a few data about uh, CNRS, but in France there is also higher education, and you can see on this slide recent percentage of women at the position of assistant professor at the professor position, and you see that in science, it's, these are the lowest percentages, uh, one third of women among the assistant professors and 17% uh, among the professors. And of course, it is different in mathematics and in biology and in physics. Okay. So I belong to an association. There are several women scientist associations in France. We work together. Our, uh, the mission statement include improving the position of women in science, both in the public and private sector, uh, promote a positive image of science among women and of image and a good image of women in science, and encouraging more girls and boys also entering science because there are not so many people interested in science. So we go to classes. Uh, in particular for that. So uh, my, my topic will be focused on Europe. And uh, Martin quoted the, this booklet, She Figures, which is issued every third year by the European Commission and which is uh, 150 pages of statistics. So there were two pages which were mentioned. Here is another one. So you can see that there are uh, data from the, the countries all over Europe and also outside Europe if they are associated to the framework program. And for example, this slide, maybe it's difficult to read, is the evolution of the, of the proportion of women in grade A positions, so it means professor or uh, 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 research director position equivalent in uh, different countries. So the blue bar is the EU average for the 28 countries at that time. And the proportion is around 21%. The top, the best one, the best uh, student on top is Macedonia. But there are probably very few persons, so yeah. you cannot say yeah. something about so that. Yeah. And the, the bottom one is Cyprus. And just above is Luxembourg. And France is uh, indicated by the red arrow. So it's below the average for that. Okay, so the European Commission has been working on the women and science issue now for 20 years. It started in very seriously in 98, and uh, so they, they, made, uh, uh, they observed the situation and they tried to propose actions. And uh, the first report was issued in, 2000, 
exactly in 2000. Uh, it was called, it's called Etan Report, and it was about uh, uh, women scientists in West, Western Europe. So, of course, the, the first action is a quality of treatment, but in the first report, there was this cartoon. Uh, to ensure a fair selection, all the animals have to test, uh, do the same test, either, uh, that is climbing the tree. So, I cannot tell you whether the women in science are the elephant or the goldfish or the monkey, but it means that if you set the same rules for everybody, uh, some people are more handicapped than others. So if that does not work, uh, if that is not enough, then one can imagine positive discrimination. This was done in a few countries, but it's very often illegal or after the action is set, there are suits to say that it should not be done. So what the uh, commission uh, proposed at the beginning was to do gender mainstreaming, that is to integrate the idea of gender equality in all actions. But sometimes uh, it's not if sufficient. And then there were successive policies at the unit, which is dealing with this issue, at the European Commission in uh, the Directorate General Research. So the first one was to sensitize the scientific community to, to this question we are dealing today. After a few years, they, they thought that because uh, women were not succeeding in promotions and so on, uh, they should better follow the codes and so behave more like the men are doing. So it should be to change the women. And after a few years, uh, they, they focused to another objective, which is changing the institution. So you mentioned that, it's exactly what is going on now. So it's uh, the so-called structural changes, and currently there are three objectives. Increase women's participation in different EU projects, uh, uh, get a better balance between men and women in decision position, and also include the gender dimension in research in every case where it is possible. So, of course, when uh, uh, Françoise is speaking about dark matter, it's a bit difficult to see the gender dimension in it, but there are plenty of uh, things, uh, trans public transportation, biology, medicine, of course, in which if you consider that there are men and women, you can have a better research because you are more complete, the transportation are, are used by men and women, not at the same time, not the same way, and so on. An example like others. Okay, so now I go on the association side. Uh, at the European Commission in 2005, there had been actions from the top. They considered that it was also important to have the point of view of grassroots of the women scientists themselves, so they put the creation, they pushed the creation of an association of association, which is the European platform of women scientists. So it is, in fact, it was a project, but it is also a Belgian uh, non-profit international association, uh, Association Internationale Sans But Lucratif, IESBL, the way it's called. The members are mainly networks of women scientists over Europe, but also individuals from the public and the private sector, all disciplines and all uh, ages. And the goals, the main goal, is to give a voice to women scientists at EU level, so to, to try to do something in EU policy, and also to promote the inclusion of the gender dimension in science that I mentioned a minute ago. So at the beginning, uh, this association was very strongly funded by the Commission, but after a few years, they, they stop the funding, like all projects, uh, projects are not forever, and now we are an ordinary association operating our, on our members' voluntary work with a website, a newsletter, and uh, we try to express the position of women scientists on position papers. For example, now Horizon Europe, the next framework program starting in 2021 is under discussion, and we are uh, going to express uh, our view, we find that gender is not represented enough, and so on. So, as in the association, we have a general assembly that we try to link with the conference, and you can see with the places that it tries to go to the different European countries. Last week, it was in Pisa, Italy, but it has been in Germany, in uh, Hungary, and often in Brussels. 
we try to be visible, to participate to European uh, event. Uh, last year, there was a colloquium at the European Parliament. And of course, since we are association all over Europe, we have a European expertise. And every year, the French Ministry of Higher Education and Research is giving a topic, a benchmarking topic to EPWS. And uh, for example, this year, the topic was about uh, uh, what is done to help a PhD to enter the world of work as mentoring and coaching. So we make a report, we ask our members from different countries what is going on, and we make a report with that.